in Gibbs magazine. Did you read it? No, what did it say? Plenty. Of course, he didn't mention her name. He never does, but he might just as well have. Here, page 12. If that door opens, ditch it for the love of Pete. Oh, worry, I'd sooner have the FBI catch me with the plans of the B-19 bomber. <laughs> Madam Gloria's office. Oh, I'm sorry, Miss Williams, but the madam won't be able to make that today. Yes, I'll call you later. Goodbye. Boy, no wonder she's raving. Wouldn't you think they'd get tired of battling each other after all these years? Isn't that silly? What started it, anyway? Well, as far as I can find out, it started on their honeymoon, when Gibbs tried to make her live like he does, on fruits, vegetables, and nuts. Gibbs and Madam Gloria? I didn't know they were ever married. Well, it didn't last very long. She stood it about six months and then gave him up for a big, juicy steak. Mm. You've been trying to prove each other wrong ever since, huh? Yes, and getting rich doing it. Mm. Let's see how the Blitzkrieg is going. What do you suppose I pay you $15,000 a year for if it isn't to take care of things like this? But, madam, I can't control... Don't that. alibi! You get hold of this publicity man and make him lay off me in my business or I'll... Poor old Bolger. I guess this is no time to ask for a raise. Call me when she cools off. Well, don't worry about it, madam. You know I can take care of this. Oh... Hello, uh, Pat, I... Hello, looks like you had a good workout. Ah, uh, she's not so hard to handle if you use the right approach. Excuse me, I'll see you later. Where in the world have you been? Oh, but Madame Gloria's, why? Oh, nothing, except Gibbs's office has called here every five minutes for the last two hours, and I've just about run out of alibi. Well, sorry, I ran into a small-sized tornado. How much longer do you think you're gonna get away with this, anyway? I don't know, but it's fun while it lasts. Sooner or later, one of them is going to find out that you're working for both of them. Then where will you be? Oh, looking for new clients, I guess. Get Gibbs on the phone and tell him I'm on my way. Hey. Yes? Better take that copy of Gloria's magazine out of your pocket, stupid. Uh-oh. During the entire 62 years of my life... In last I... month's articles, you said you were 58. During the entire 58 years of my life, I have lived exclusively on vegetables, fruits, and nuts. I owe my vigorous health to this strict diet, which I have made the basis of the famous Gibbs system. Come in. Morning, H.D. Morning, Bolger. I'm just having breakfast. Won't you join me? <laughs> no, thanks. Uh, I've been trying to reach you for an hour. Oh, sorry, H.D. Where have you been? Well, I had a little longer workout than usual this morning. Splendid. There's nothing like body development. Oh, uh, about this afternoon. Is everything arranged? Yes, yeah, all set. The girls will be at the gym at 2 o'clock. I'll be tied up all morning, so uh, I'm depending on you to follow mm -hmm. through. Well, here are the photographs, the measurements, and the questionnaires. You may want to check them over. Anything else, sir? Uh, make a note. Uh, prospect 17874. Uh, see you later. Yes, at the gym at 2. Uh, uh, where was I? Prospect 17874. Oh, yes, prospect 17874. Huh? Uh, vegetables, fruits, and nuts. Hey, you're pretty good. What'd you say? 
I say, you're pretty... You're pretty good. Oh, thanks. Can I help you? Yes, I'm looking for the instructor, Connolly. Well, I'm Connolly. Ah, well, I'm Al Bolger. I'm handling some publicity on this contest for gifts. Yes, the man I want to see. What's the idea of canceling my 2 o'clock class? Well, I thought everybody in the place knew about that. Well, I've only been here since yesterday. What goes on? Well, my friend, here's the big story. For months, we've been interviewing and photographing girls. Today, the cream of the crop will be judged by the great Gibbs himself, and the winner becomes the Gibbs Physical Culture Girl of 1942 with a face on all our publications. Well, that's a lot of work just for a pretty face. It's not only the face, my boy, it's the figure. The winner must be a living testimonial of the Gibbs diet system and all its benefits. We'll give her a publicity campaign, newspaper interviews, personal appearances, lectures, class demonstrations. Why, before we get through with her, she'll be the symbol of form and beauty to every woman and man in America. Sounds like a swell job. It's not only a job, my boy, it's a career. Thanks. But uh, getting back to earth, you better get the place straightened up here before 2 o'clock. I've got a girl who'll just fit that job. She's good looking, brunette, blue eyes. Great personality. She has everything. I know, I know. They all have. Oh, I bet if I brought her over, you'd like her. Look, Jimmy, I don't pick them. I publicize them. Besides, this is no time to start looking at new faces. So long, Jim. Madam Gloria's office. Oh, I'm sorry, but the madam is in conference and has left word not to be disturbed. You see, she always spends at least an hour in quiet meditation before any important demonstration. I don't see why today isn't as good as any other day to ask for a raise. But you know my rule, Pat, dear. Before a class demonstration, I never let my mind dwell on material things. Well, you don't have to dwell on it. You just say yes. Oh, Pat, dear, don't, don't, don't let's get ourselves upset about this. Well, a raise wouldn't upset me. It would upset me to discuss money matters with anyone today. Yes? Mrs. Brown is on the phone. Put it on. My dear Mrs. Brown. Isn't it marvelous what thought transference can do? I was just thinking about you. Yes. Which Mrs. Brown is this? Mrs. Cornelius Brown, rating double A one. Oh, yes. Of course, my dear. Well, I just knew you'd never forgive me if I didn't tell you about the new class I'm forming. It teaches soul appreciation and its far-reaching effects upon the mind and health. Yes. And you'll absolutely laugh when I tell you how ridiculous the fee is. <laughs> it's only $1,000 for the entire course. Yes. Splendid, splendid. Uh, just mail your check in and my secretary will enroll you. Yes, well, thank you so much, Mrs. Brown. Uh, goodbye. Uh, One thousand bucks. Uh, uh, what were you talking about? A ten dollar raise. Oh. Well, uh, I, I, um, okay, I, I never, okay. uh, skip it. Yes? You're wanted in the auditorium. Thank you. Come along, Pat. Oh, Pat. Jimmy phoned and wants you to meet him at Pedro's at 1 o'clock. Well, what do you want? I don't know. He just said it was important. Oh, thanks. Okay. Hello, Pedro. Oh, hello, Jimmy. I heard you and the fine ring was quitting one another. Well, who told you that? Pat? Uh -huh, that's what she thinks, but I still have something to say about it. <laughs> that's what you think. It's like my wife, Maria. I say no. She said yes. We're talking for two hours. It is still yes. Well, why don't you take the other side of the argument? What do you mean? Why don't you say yes first? Okay. I say yes. She say no. The answer is no. I say no. She say yes. The answer is yes. They both got the same difference. Well, what is it, Pedro? Yes or no? <laughs> well, I try oh, Excuse me, Pedro. I want to talk to Pat. <laughs> sure, I understand. <laughs> well, how do you like the new job, Jimmy? Isn't it better than fighting for a living? We won't go over that again. Okay. How about lunch? Haven't time. Two coffees, Pedro. Okay, Jimmy. What's all the hurry? Well, Gibbs is running a contest to pick a streamlined figure. The winner gets a picture on the cover of our magazine, a big build-up, personal appearances, and a lot of publicity. It's a great chance for you. When does all this happen? This afternoon at 2 o'clock. Where? In our gym. Oh, Jimmy, I can't just barge into a thing like that. Well, now, leave that to me. All you've got to do is get into a one-piece bathing suit. I haven't any bathing suit. Well, there's a store right down the street. You can get a lot of them there. Well, what about my job? Gosh, Madam Gloria, to have... Oh, forget about Madam Gloria. You've been wanting to get away from her for a long time, haven't you? Yeah. Now, here's your chance. You win this, you don't have to worry about her anymore. And with all this publicity, who knows, maybe the movies. Oh, wait a minute. Not so fast. What do you say, darling? 
Oh, I don't know. It sounds silly to me, but... Good. I... Finish your coffee. Let's get out of here. Why don't you get the board of directors to help you on that one, Uncle? <laughs> Why, uh... <laughs> Uh, I just got this in the mail. A uh, silly little gadget, isn't it? Yes, it is. Uh, you left your little black book on the telephone stand. I knew you'd be lost without it, so I brought it over. Oh, yes. Yes, thanks. Uh, it has my attorney's private number in it. And I was just... There isn't a man's name in the whole book. I looked. Don't you ever get tired trying to kid people? I'm not kidding anybody. I'll say you're not. It's a mystery to me how they go for it. Go for what? You know, your physical culture magazine, your health classes. All the rest of that bunk. Why shouldn't they? I'm helping them to health and happiness. I teach people how to live right, to eat the proper foods. And how you do, eating a steak and calling it a vegetable salad. Uh, Helen, you'll have to excuse me. I have a very important legal conference and I'm late. Uh, 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 thanks very much for bringing over the book. You're welcome, Uncle. Oh, Mr. Gibbs, the models are waiting for you in the gymnasium. Oh, yes, yes. Uh, uh, thanks, I'll go right down. Keep it legal, Uncle. Uh, let's get started, shall we? Huh? I say, let's get started. Oh, yes, yes. Uh, here are the photographs. Uh, we'll start with this one. Uh, all right, Barbara, please. What do you think of her, H.G.? Not bad, not bad. But you know, Borger, her profile isn't exactly what I want. How about her phone number? I thought you might appreciate my expert opinion. I would, but save it till afterwards. Uh, let's see the next one. Yes, sir. Would you step down, please, Barbara? Now, uh... Oh, uh... Oh, Elsie. You're next. By the way, uh, Elsie's one of the society crowd. She's quite prominent in Southampton, Bar Harbor, and... And around the hips. You're wrong. Every one of these girls has been selected after careful measurements for face and figure. At the moment, we're only concerned with their personalities. Uh, let's see the next one. Thank you, Elsie. All right, Dorothy. bunch of girls. Oh, I don't think they're so hot. Pretty hard to please, aren't you? Oh, I don't know. I'm Helen Gibbs. I'm Jimmy Conley. Glad to meet you. Oh, excuse me. Where have you been? Oh, I had a heck of a time trying to get a suit. Poured into it. Yeah. You think I'll get by? Oh, you're a cinch. Now look, the girls are right next to the door. All you gotta do is watch your chance and get up on that platform. You got it? Yeah. Okay. Oh, that is. Thank you. All right, wait a minute. What's the idea? Why, Pat, what are you doing here? doing here? Oh, <laughs> just uh, acting as one of the judges. Not bad, Uncle. Who is she? I haven't the slightest idea. Mm, that's a pity. Oh, I'm sorry to be late, H.G., but uh, you should have phoned me sooner. Why, <laughs> oh, I, I, uh... So you haven't the slightest idea who she is, eh? Uh, this is Miss Pat Hilton. I, uh, seem to have mislaid her measurements. Huh? And, uh, I don't find her photographs either. Why, no. Uh, we don't seem to have anything on her. She seems to have something on you, Uncle. <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh, a 
Well, that's how you got in, eh? Yeah. Mine was an inside job. How did you do it? No pictures, no measurements, no phone number. My, my, how distressing. <laughs> yes, isn't it? <laughs> That'll do, Miss Bolger. I, I, I mean, Miss Hilton. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> All right, Bolger, let's see the next one. All right, all right, uh, that is. Well, it looks like the little Hilton lady is the Gibbs girl of 1942. That's my girl. Oh, I wouldn't be too sure. What do you think, H.G.? Well, the Hilton girl has charm, beauty, poise, grace. Frankly, I was impressed by her. So I noticed. Sure, she's attractive, but Gladys is a professional model. Barbara has personality and photographs even better than Gladys. But look, Borgia, this is too important to settle now. Uh, as a matter of fact, any of these girls could qualify. Uh, I'd like to think it over. Meet me in my office in an hour. Yes, sir, in an hour. Borgia probably has all of those phone numbers, Uncle. Well, how am I doing, Judgey? Oh, Gibbs went for your hook, line, and sinker. But what will Madame Gloria say if he hires you? You better worry about what she'll say if he doesn't. Well, what do you mean? Well, I'm quitting her soon anyway, but you are still working for her. And if she finds out... <laughs> say, what's working for Madame Gloria got to do with it? Who's working for Madame Gloria? I said, who's working for Madame Gloria? I am. You? Well, well, well. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to get even with this old buzzard if it's the last thing I ever do. Yeah? Well, I got an idea, too. How do you like this one? If you can't think of something by tomorrow, I'm going to hire Gibbs publicity man. He seems to have plenty of ideas, and I don't care what it costs me, either. Boy, how do you like that? I'm my own competitor. It's getting tougher every day to earn an honest living. Honest? Uh, well, anyway, a living. Pat, you certainly got me in a mess. You sent for me, Mr. Gibbs? Uh, yes, come in. Well, my dear, you've had a very busy morning, haven't you? Oh, I sure have. I never had so many pictures taken in one day in my whole life. That's <laughs> just the beginning, just the beginning. You know, my dear, I have great plans for you. I feel this is the start of a very happy association. Oh, thanks. <laughs> but uh, I mustn't overwork you the first day. I think you need a nice little drive in the country this afternoon. Now, you know, that's just what I was going to do. Fine, I'll go with you. We can stop oh, at... Oh, I'm uh, sorry, Mr. Gibbs, but... You see, I promised to show someone a little old farm that's been in my family for years. Oh, you did, huh? Uh, yes, sir. Oh. Uh, well, uh, some other time. Oh, of course. Anything else? Uh, no, that's all. All right. Oh, my dear. Yes, Mr. Gibbs? Have a good time. Oh, thanks. I expect to. Uh -huh. Boy, oh, boy, this is a light. Smell that air, will you? It's great, isn't it? Everything's great. Gosh, I've had so many surprises in the last few days. I'm still up in the air. Think you could stand another? What? Yeah. Why, Jimmy Connolly. Guess you'll need a magnifying glass to see it. Don't be silly. It's, it's beautiful. Aren't you going to put it on? Yeah. Oh, no, not that one. This one. Jimmy? Yeah? Remember I said I had a surprise for you when you quit fighting? Uh-huh. 
Well, this is where Mr. and Mrs. Jimmy Conley are going to live. What do you mean? I'm no farmer. Oh, neither am I. But you're a good physical culture director. And we can make this place into a wonderful summer camp for boys. Say, you've got something there. We could build up a business of our own. And I'll bet a lot of Gibbs clients would send their sons to us. That's great. When do we start? Wait a minute, not so fast. There's a lot of improvements to be made around here first. Let's look the place over. All right. See out there under those trees, Jimmy? Yeah. Well, that'd be a perfect spot for the tent houses. Yeah, it would. And over there, that'd make a great baseball field. And maybe we could uh, drain that pond back there and make a swimming pool. Oh, wait a minute. This is no government project, you know. Well, it wouldn't cost much, and if you let me keep on fighting. Jimmy, we've been all over that. And tonight is your last fight, young man. Your very last, remember? But look, Pat. You're making more money than I am now. Well, so what? You'll be doing the biggest share when we get the place started. I don't see why you don't let me keep on party. This way. Stopping everything Tiger throws at him. Doesn't look any the worse for it. That's because Tiger's giving most of his attention to some blonde out there. <laughs> break it. Break it. Now listen. Cut out the clowning. Put that yokel to bed and let's get out of here. All right, all right. Find out who that blonde is for me, will you? Come on, Tiger. Never mind that blonde. Pay attention. <laughs> the tiger will explain this one. <laughs> explain it? Listen, that mug can explain anything. He's got the greatest collection of alibis you ever heard. I've known him for years, and he always has me a laugh. Hey, let's go down to the dressing room, huh? All right. You mind? No, go ahead. And while you're down there, say hello to Jimmy for me. I'll be right back. I know it's tough having a romance busted up like that. Oh, lay off me, will you? An accident can happen to anyone, can't it? That kind of an accident could only happen to you, and I've got enough of it. I grabbed you when you're ready to hit the bottom. I started you up, so what? A blonde pushes you right down again. Hiya, Shady. Hello, Bill. Chief, you've got it all wrong. It wasn't a blonde. I'll say it wasn't. It was a sock on the chin from a guy who couldn't lick a plate clean. Listen, boss. What could I do against a guy who had powers like that? Powers like what? What are you trying to hand me now? I'm not handing you anything. I'm telling you what happened. The guy, well, he hexed me. He what? He hexed me. I could feel what I wanted to do all right, but well, I just couldn't do it. <laughs> he was hexed. <laughs> well, if that ain't one for the book. I don't get it. What do you mean, Tiger? Well, I don't know exactly, but you know he had a funny look in his eyes. And every time he looked at me, it seemed to go through me clear down to my hips. Well, that's why I kept my head turned away. Yeah, and that blonde had nothing to do with it. No, I'm telling you, get me another match for that guy. I'll... No, you'll get another manager. Can you beat that? He was hexed. <laughs> <laughs> well, I thought I heard them all. Hello, Jimmy. Hello. Hiya, fellas. You did a pretty good job tonight, kid. Oh, thanks. Yeah, but you should have heard what Tiger said. This will slay you. Well, what can he say? And I could call, didn't I? Yeah, but he said you hexed him. I what? He said you put the hex on him. Well, what does he mean? He said when you looked at him, he had a funny feeling right down his spine, and he couldn't do anything. Yeah? What do you got to say about it? 
As good an alibi as any. But it'll make a pep of a story. It will. <laughs> Well, let's have that terrific idea of yours. It's not only terrific, it's 100% original. Why, there are no adjectives to describe it. Cut out the build-up. Let's have the facts. All right, here they are. It's a perfect example of mind over matter. That's bunk. Sure it is, but here's what we can do with it. Now, look. 85% of your clients are women. Now, here's a chance to appeal to the men. How? Here's how. Now, prize spiking is strictly physical, isn't it? Yes. Okay, by using this hexing idea, we can sell them books, courses, and lectures on the power of brain over brawn. Sell who? Millions of men. Just think of all the little fellows that have always wanted to take a punch at somebody bigger than themselves. <laughs> well, you've got something there. You bet I have. <laughs> right, Sam. Just the man I want to see. Do you mind if I sit down? No, I'll sit down. Oh, thanks. Jimmy, you're made. What? That hexing stunt you pulled last night was a wow. I just got through talking to one of the cleverest fight managers in town, and we both agree that you can go a long way in the fight game. Well, it sounds good, but I can't do it. Why? I quit fighting. Are oh, you kidding? <laughs> no, I'm not. But you're going to cash in on this hexing business, aren't you? Oh. Mm hmm. Well, I think I can get you a couple of thousand to fight, or maybe four or five fights. Wouldn't that interest you? Sure it would. If I hadn't promised Pat, I'd quit after last night. Oh. Can't you talk her out of that promise? You don't know Pat. All right. Perhaps we can work another angle. Maybe you won't have to fight. Maybe I've I... have got to go. I'm late now. Well, look, Jimmy, what time do you finish? Five. Well, why not come over to my office then? Let's talk this over, hmm? I've got a date at six. Oh, it's all right. It won't take long. You can still make your date. Okay. That's good. <laughs> well, so long, Jimmy. So long, Al. How much do I owe you, Pedro? Oh, uh, 25 and 35 is 50 and 10 is 65 cents. Well, that's 70, isn't it, Pedro? Oh, well, I'm not charge you for the warm up. Well, tell Pat I've gone to Bolger's office at 5. I may be a little late getting back. Okay, I'll tell her. Of course, I said, you having a little trouble? They might have troubles. I don't know what's the matter with this toaster machine. A whole lot of bread I put inside and it don't come out near. <laughs> Maybe you better hex him, I think so. Yeah. Que pasa? Cuidado! Mixing gags a lot of hooey. There's nothing to it. I don't care whether there is or not. It ties into something else I'm working on. All we have to do is to play it up big. We'll call him uh, the Miracle Kid. Get him a couple of fights, and every time he wins, the newspapers will eat up the story. That's all I want. But suppose he don't win. He's no Dempsey, you know. That's your job, to make sure he always wins. That's gonna cost money. Don't worry about that. The party I'm with... When do we start? Well, first I have to get the kid signed up, and I'm having a little trouble there. Why? I want a kind of his girl. She don't want him to fight anymore. I may have to break up a romance before I get done. Go right in, Hexie. <laughs> Thanks. Oh, hello, Jimmy. Hi, Al. You know Shady, don't you? Yeah, sure. Yeah. Only he ought to. <laughs> he hexed me out of a fighter. <laughs> <laughs> Look, Jimmy, I know you're in a hurry, so sit down. Okay. Let's get down to business. You're uh, figuring on going into business for yourself, aren't you? Yeah. You have a piece of land, haven't you? Well, Pat has. All right, so Pat has it. It's going to take a lot of money to fix up your camp, and on top of that, you're going to get married, right? That's right. I don't know how much you and Pat save each month, but if you take a pencil and figure out how long it's going to take you to save enough money, my guess is five years. Oh, you're just trying to make it look tough. It won't take that long. Maybe not. Maybe only four. Now, look. If you work with us, I'll guarantee you'll have the money in six months. How's that? Without fighting? Oh, no. I have to fight a couple of fights, maybe even four or five. That's the rub. Pat won't stand for it. She'll walk out on me. Look, Jimmy, no man ever lost a girl by being a success. But sometimes they get tired of waiting. Well, I'll talk it over with her, but I don't think I'll get away with it. Excuse me, Jimmy. Yes? Miss Gibbs is here. I'll be right out. 
Excuse me, Jimmy. Sorry. Don't go away. Well, what's the SOS for? Did Uncle finally get wise to you? Oh, don't even mention it. No, here's what I want you to do. It's a sort of a combination of business and pleasure. Will you get me some bandage out of the first aid kit, please? Bandage? What is this? Don't ask questions. Just listen. Jimmy Conley is in there. And... Oh, he is? Yeah. Well... Wait a minute. Will you wait a minute? Wait till I tell you the setup. Now, look, here's what I want you to do. Jimmy's girlfriend doesn't want him to fight. Now, you could be a great help to me if you would just sort of kind of... Here's the idea. All my life, I've been looking for a champion. Now I got one, and he don't want to fight. Well, it's not that I don't want to fight. You see, my girl has always been against fight. Gee, it's late. I got to get out of here. I'll see you later. Oh, hello. Hello. Well, what happened to you? Oh, I, uh... She tripped getting out of the elevator and sprained her wrist. Oh, that's too bad. It would have to happen today. I have a date at the barnyard, and I, I can't drive with one hand. Oh, I'm sorry I can't be of any help to you. I'll be tied up for three hours. Oh, maybe Jimmy could drive you, huh? I'd like to, but I've got a date. Oh, it wouldn't take long. You can just drop me and drive back in my car. Be awfully sweet if you would, Jimmy. Well, all right. Well, that's fine. That's fine. Now, you two run along. Or oh, excuse me, I have to make a phone call. Oh, but I'm late already. I'll call Pat for you, Jimmy. All right. Uh, she's at Pedro's. Tell her I'm... Uh... Uh, taking care of some business. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Leave it to me. Pedro, is that clock right? Yes, I think so. Maybe you got a couple of minutes slow or quick. I don't remember which way is it. See, I wonder what Bolger wants with Jimmy that's taking so long. Maybe I'm spoiling surprises. But I think Jimmy is going to make mucho dinero. You know, lots of money. How? Don't tell him I tell you, but I hear something. This Bolger, he say he get $2,000 for a fight, maybe five or six fights. And this didn't was hay, neither. Fight? See. Si. Well, Jimmy isn't going to fight anymore. I don't think. That's why he goes to the man's office, no? I wonder. That'll be her. Hello? Oh, hello, Pat. Say, so what's all this about you wanting Jimmy to fight some more? Oh, didn't he tell you? Yes, we've got him all set for five or six fights at two grand a fight. Isn't that great? Put him on the phone. Oh, he isn't here now. He and Helen Gibbs went out to celebrate his new contract. Mm hmm. Mm hmm? Oh, I don't know. Said something about the Coast Highway. Yes, the barnyard. Is Pedro right? Is he going to give it to you as surprises? Oh, no. I'm going to give it to him as surprises. I wonder why I don't keep him my big mouth shut. Would you mind coming in with me for a minute, Jimmy? I don't like to go in alone. Well, all right. I've got to be running along. Uh, what about your car? You can return it in the morning. You know, they make the best zombies here. Uh, two zombies, Harry. Yes, ma'am. Well, I ought to be going. Oh, sit down for a minute. Well, uh... Just a minute. Uh... This is a pleasant surprise, my dear. How did you know the barnyard was my favorite night spot? Well, I didn't, but uh, I've heard a lot about it lately. <laughs> Ever been there? No. But I decided tonight was a good night to go. <laughs> It's quite a place, something a little different. I hope you'll find it interesting. Yes, I'm quite sure I will. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Here we are, my dear. Oh, what a delightful place. Just a spot to spend a quiet evening. Good evening, Mr. Gibbs. Hello, Harry. Uh, there's a nice table over there, Pat. Huh? 
That table over there, wouldn't you like it? Oh, yes, it's very nice, but wouldn't you like that booth? It's much more private. Well, yes, yes, of course. Uh, the booth, Harry. Yes, sir. Something to drink? Yes, please. Uh, what would you like, my dear? Oh, uh, you order for me. Uh, would you like a martini? Mm -hmm. uh, one martini and one bourbon highball, please. Thank you. Uh, what would you like to eat, my dear? Mm -hmm. Say, these zombies are good. Yes, they are. Yeah, they kind of relax you. And they give you a little glow. You like to glow? <laughs> of course, who doesn't? What's wrong, my dear? Oh, uh, I, I forgot to make a phone call. Is, is there a telephone around here? Certainly, right over there. Thank you. Excuse me? Why, of course. Barnyard. Will you please page Mr. Jimmy Conley? Yes, ma'am. Let's dance, shall we? Oh, I can't remember. Well, there's no time like the present to learn. Come on. Okay, now your feet. Mr. Jimmy Conley, telephone. Well, saved by the phone bell. Mr. Jimmy Conley, phone. Well, who in the world? Go ahead. Mr. Jimmy Conley, it's me. Uh, second booth, sir. Thank you. Hello? Oh, hello, Pat. I'm sorry I couldn't make it at six. Did Bolger tell you? Yes, Bolger told me. But what are you doing out there? Oh, nothing much. Uh, just sitting around, having a couple of drinks. Three or four of us. Three or four of you, huh? Well, if you're gonna rumble with that Gibbs girl, you better lay off those zombies. Think little Pat is sitting home alone. You're crazy. Well, fancy meeting me here. It is funny. Yeah, <laughs> funny as a call for help. Well, I'm glad to see you. I bet you are. You better run along and take care of your glowy little girlfriend. Wait a minute, you don't understand. Oh, no? No, no, listen to me. I'm going to tell you You let go of me. Don't be silly. If you don't let go of me, I'll... You'll what? Come here. You let go of me, Jimmy Conley. I never want to see you again. Say! Oh, that's marvelous, Folger. It's the best laugh I've had in ten years. <laughs> yes, well, your, your kid Hex has already earned his first week's salary. <laughs> Uh, uh, now, now, look, look. Uh, you get hold of that negative if you can before Gibbs does. All right. I'll take care of it. So far, so good, Shady, my boy. Won't you in? Yes. Thanks. <laughs> oh, hello, Jimmy. Hello, hello, Jimmy. How are you? Where's that contract? Uh, oh, here it is. Have you read this? What? Yep. Is it okay? Uh, yeah, yep. Give me a pen. Uh, oh, excuse me. Here. Here. And the sooner I start fighting, the better I like it. Good morning, H.G. Good morning. Well, I see we're in the papers this morning. There ought to be a law against those candid camera hounds. Oh, before I forget it, I want to... I've already done it. I phoned the employment agency for a physical director who is young, intelligent, and has no knowledge of the manly art of self-defense. And I want you... And Mr. Conley's closing check is already in the mail. Hmm, you think of everything, don't you? 
Come in. Good morning, Uncle. Morning. Good morning, Miss Feeney. Good morning. Well, I couldn't resist the temptation to drop down and congratulate you on last night's performance. I wouldn't be surprised if you made Winchell's column. Perhaps you'll be good enough to explain why you were running around with one of my employees. One of your ex-employees. How did you know I fired him? You didn't. He quit. He telephoned me this morning that he's going back to prize fighting. Good. That's where he belongs. Now, and I hope he gets two cauliflower ears. Now, now, what is your sporting blood? After all, he only gave you one black eye. And you did steal his girl. Seems to me you got the best of the bargain. Well, Helen, I'll have you understand... Toodaloo, Romeo. And you better get a piece of beefsteak for that eye. Mr. Gibbs, I've been thinking about that personal appearance tour. When can I leave? I thought you didn't want to go. Well, I didn't, but there's no reason now why I shouldn't. Fine, I'll get Bolger right on it. Yes? Uh, get me Bolger. All right. <laughs> my, my. Isn't it funny what a difference a little punch in the eye can make? <laughs> yes, isn't it? Busy, Pedro. Oh, yes, I know that. I read in the papers all about your fight. Even the Spanish ones, they yeah. got it. <laughs> the old hex is sure something, no, Jimmy? Still working good. Do you know something? These old toasts are working good ever since you hex them. <laughs> what you going to eat? Oh, nothing, Pedro. Uh, just came in to see how you were. Oh, I'm fine. Maria, she's fine too. And my little Chiquita, she's fine. She got a fine new baby last week. No. Mm hmm. Old Pedro is a grandfather right now. What do you think of that, Jimmy? Congratulations, Pedro. <laughs> Gracias. Same to you. You uh, haven't seen Pat lately, have you? Uh -huh. No, she goes away. I got her the postcard from Chicago. You did? Mm hmm. She didn't look to you, Jimmy? No. Oh, I almost forgot. What's the matter with me? She was in just before she leaving. And she told me to give this to you. Of course, you know all about the farm, ain't you? Yeah, yeah, I know. Mm -hmm. Gee whiz, that's pretty, no? Yeah. There, Pedro. Give it to Chiquita's baby, will you? Gracias, Jimmy. Gracias. Sister, when I hit them, they stay hit. I'll say, from what I've seen. Oh, hello, Pat. Oh, Bolger in? Uh -uh, just went down to the bank, but he'll be right back. Oh, pardon me, Pat. This is Kay O'Kane, Pat Hilton, our physical culture girl. Hiya, Toots. And his manager, Tony Rocco. Oh. Oh. Kay was fighting Jimmy Friday night. Oh, uh, is that so? Yeah. How would you girls like me to slip a couple of passes? And after the fight, we'll go places. You've got something there. What do you say, Pat? Oh, I don't know. Why, Pat! Nice to see you back. <laughs> Thank you. Mr. Gibbs said you wanted to see me about photographs. Yes, I know. Uh, if you don't mind waiting a few minutes, I'll be right with you. Uh, Not at all. Come on in, boys. Uh, Al is still handling Jimmy, isn't he? Mm, yeah, sure. And what are Kane and his manager doing here? Oh, uh, well, Mr. Kane is one of our accounts. Oh, Al must be branching out. I'll say he is. This is getting to be one of the busiest offices in town. Well, I never get a chance to go out for lunch anymore. How about it? Have some? Oh, no, thanks. Here's the 2,000. Look, Bulger. I figure we got more to lose in this fight than you have. 2,000 ain't enough. We want 2,500. Wait a minute. I thought Shady said that was agreed on. What is this, a holdup? What do you mean? Sit down. You don't mean nothing personal. This is business. You see the position we're in, don't you? Yes, but $2,500 is a lot of money. Look, let's talk this over. Nothing doing. Either it's a deal right now or it ain't. Well, what do you say? 
Well, we'll find out. Yes? Get me the old lady. Tell her it's important. All right. She's the boss. If it's all right with her, it's all right with me. But I still think it's too much. Hello, Marge. Mr. Bolger wants to speak to Madam. It's very important. Okay, I'll hang on. Uh, may I borrow your pencil, please? Oh, I'm so sorry. Oh, well, I, I think if you sponge it with cold water right away, I don't think it'll stay. Do you think so? Oh, dear me, and I just got this back from the cleaners, too. Just one moment, please. And Madame Blurry is on the phone. They're both in my office now. They want the ante raised to 2,500, or it'll be Jimmy who hits the floor in the fourth round instead of Kane. And they're not fooling. I thought you knew how to manage these setups. For two pins, I'd call the whole thing off. Oh, I wouldn't do that now. The fight's all arranged. The publicity's out. It'd be a terrible kickback if it turned out wrong and Jimmy lost. We, we, we'd be the laughing stock of the town. To say nothing of what it would do to your business. Oh, all right, give it to him. If there are any more slip-ups like this, I'll get somebody else to handle these deals. I thought you were out of town. Well, I just got back this morning. Oh. Jimmy, I found out something that you should know. There's some place around here we can talk? Well, sure. Uh, in the office. No cauliflower here? You always did worry about them, didn't you? I used to, but not anymore. Well, how am I doing? Five knockouts in a row and a six coming up. You're pretty sure of yourself, aren't you? Yep, me and the old hex and these. The old hex. Don't tell me you really believe that stuff, Jimmy. Well, it's already worked five times. None of the fight's over four rounds. Listen, those fights were won in somebody's office before you ever stepped into the ring. What are you talking about? Oh, you poor kid. Don't you know you're being used by Bolger? All those knockouts were framed. Oh, now I'll tell one. Look, you're fighting Kane on Friday, aren't you? Yep, and he won't go four rounds. I know he won't. I just came from Bolger's office, and Kane and his manager were there. I heard Bolger tell Madame Gloria over the phone that Kane wanted $2,500 to lay down in the fourth round. And she said, okay. You don't believe me, do you? No, I don't. Okay, Mr. Big Shot. I was trying to help you, but I guess it's no use. But along about the third round Friday night, you act groggy and start to fall. You see if Kane doesn't hold you up. I just made a fool of myself. I should have known better. Not worth it anyway. Oh, senorita. That is the mouth who is talking, not the heart. And you don't fool him, old Pedro. Yeah, yeah, go ahead. Try to look him mad. You is funny, you two kids. Very funny. <laughs> First Jimmy coming in with his chin down to here and mad with you. Then you coming in and mad with him. It's very funny, you two kids. <laughs> very funny. Oh, what's funny about it? It's funny because why? It's so silly, that's why. Wait, I'm going to show you something. Look at this. What is it? It's the farm. That's what is it. You sell it, Jimmy find out, he buy it and give it back to you. What do you think of that? And besides this, Jimmy give it to me money every week to took care of for him. Seven, eight hundred dollars he's got already. And you say Jimmy's no good? You're crazy, you are crazy. Well, I guess I am crazy. Oh, muchacha mia, excuse me. I don't got the right to score you like this. But I wish I had the right to spank you, you crazy little kid. 
Yeah, I've got a crazy idea, too. There's only one way to wake Jimmy up. What's that? To have K.O.K. knock him out. What are you going to do? Oh, I've got one fighter on my hands already. Now I'm going to buy the other one. This fight's going to end my way. Now, for reasons of my own, which wouldn't interest you, I want Jimmy Connolly knocked out tonight. Well, of course, I know it would, uh, shall we say, upset your plans. What plans? Yours and Bolger's. I could go to the Boxing Commission. Oh, I know it might be a little difficult to prove anything. Besides, if I did, it'd be a black mark against Jimmy. So I'm willing to match Bolger's 2,500 if you can knock him out. What do you mean, if I can knock him out? Oh, all right. Uh, if you will knock him out. That's better. Well, what do you say? I've got the 2,500 right here. Let's see it. Fair enough. Not enough? Well, Kane was willing to lose for that much. I'm asking him to win. It ain't that. It's the principle of the thing. If you and Bolger both pay the same amount, it wouldn't be fair to double-cross them. Now, if you was to raise the ante to $3,000, then my conscience would be clear. See? Yes, I see. Okay. I'll give you the 2500 now and the rest in a couple of weeks. Uh, uh, uh. No dice. 3000 before the fight or we don't play. Well, where in the world am I going to get $500 at this time of the night? That's up to you, sister. May I use your phone? Yeah, sure. It's right over there. Lovely doors. Hasta la vista. Hello. Oh, hello. You caught me just in time. I was going to the vice right now. I was. Pedro, have you still got that money of Jimmy? Well, look, I want to borrow 500 of it until tomorrow. Well, gee whiz, I don't see Jimmy. It didn't was my money. I don't got the permission, Jack, you know? Oh, it'll be all right. Oh, wait for me. I'll be right over. Well, it's all right. You'll get it. I'll just keep this on account. You shouldn't be running around with this much money anyway. Uh, okay. Where will I meet you? Here? No, it's time for us to leave for the stadium. We'll be in dressing room B, and you'd better hurry. And no checks. Sometimes they bounce. Hurry up, Uncle. It's getting late. The first bout goes on at 8 o'clock. Well, uh, well, here. Here, you run along, uh, and I'll meet you there. Uh, that's your ticket. Uh, uh, I've got to wait for someone. All right. I'll give you a chance to get even tonight. I'll bet you everything I won on Jimmy's last five fights. It's fur coat or nothing. What do you say? It's a bet. You can't win every time. You hope. Hey, Dickie, if a dame asks me, be sure and let me know. It's business. Okay, Racco. She'd better hurry up. Come on, a kid. Worried? No. Exactly. How's the old heck working out tonight, Jimmy? Same as ever. What round do you want me to finish him in? Mm, let me see. What shall we make it? The fourth. All right, the fourth. Okay. Well, come on, let's get our seats. Good luck, Jimmy. Keep up the good work, boy. See, here is it. I hope Jimmy don't get mad to me. What you gonna do with it? The less you know about that, the better. Get in. Sentry club and step on it. I wish that Hilton gal would get here. What difference does it make whether she gets here or not? Well, I'd just like to know if I'm supposed to finish this fight standing up or on my back. That's us. Awesome. It must have been a knockout. Come on, let's go. What about that 2500 What 2500 Okay. I get it. Come on, let's go. Right until I tell you to break. Carefully, you little punch. No holding your head. Shake hands now. Come on, fight. You sure there's no chance it'll slip up? No. Rocco's a man of his word. I think I should get mink or a squirrel. All right.
the match. Break his right hand? What are you doing? Kidding me? No, throw him. You know, Kane could murder him if he wanted to. Nice going, kid. Don't put him away too soon. Don't worry. I won't. And then he says that I break my right hand. How do you like that? The kid ain't wise, I guess. So much the better, but he don't know when to hurt him. Tickets, please. Oh, I want to see Kane's manager. Well, I'm sorry. You'll have to wait till the fight's over. Let's uh, see your tickets. They're over there, two aisles over. You have to go all the way around. Well, I must get a message to Mr. Rocco. It's very important. Well, I'm sorry. Look. You just slip up to him and tell him Pat Hilton's here and everything's okay. Now remember the name, Pat Hilton. All right, you uh, you get your seats and I'll uh, I'll find you if there's any answer. Thanks. Come on, Pedro. Hi. Hello, Commissioner. Hello, Rocco. How's it going? Uh, I was fighting a pretty tough boy tonight. Uh, Kane ought to be able to take care of him, all right? I don't know. Good seats, no? Excuse me. Gentlemen. Rocco, Pat Hilton's here and says everything's okay. Pat Hilton? Yeah. Never heard of him. What do you mean bother me at a time like this? You want to get fired? No, sir. Well, then, Peter, get out of here. Come on. Did you tell him? He said he never heard of you. He never heard of me? Yeah. Well, listen, he certainly did have... Well, how do you like that? Listen, you come with Pedro. He take you. Sit down. I think I've already been taken. Huh? Skip it. <laughs> Hilton gal get here yet? Yeah. But the 500? Forget it. You're still losing the floor. Here's hoping he tries it. Huh? Nothing. I thought sure Jimmy was falling down that time. So did Kane. Say, I'm getting a little mixed up. Who's supposed to take the dive in this fight, him or me? You are, stupid. This is around coming up. Well, I wish somebody would tell him. Now watch it. This is it, Jimmy. The lucky four. Put the old hex on him now. Yeah, the old hex. Make it look good. That's it, kid. Give him the old hex. Come on, Jimmy. Fight. This is certainly great publicity. Get off your bicycle and fight. 
you want that fur coat, it looks like you'll have to trap the mink yourself. Come on, Kate. Come on and fight, you big man. Come on and fight. He's like a drive on me, I'll go to the boxing commission. What kind of a fight is this? My fight, Pedro. Jimmy stays away from him. Kane can't take a dive. And then he said he'd go to the boxing commission. He did. You sure? Certainly. I ain't deep. Not on this side. Why, that bloody double cross. Well? I hate to give that hurting dame a bargain, but you better knock his block off. Gonna be a fight? Yeah, it's gonna be a tie, but you gotta take it. Come on, Jimmy! Atta boy, Jimmy, atta boy! Come on, Kane! Atta boy, Jimmy! Atta boy! What am I yelling for? like a cold winter ahead of you, my dear. Well, Master Mine, let's see you talk your way out of this one. No, no. Let's not get excited. Not get excited? Do you realize what this means? A six-month build-up, not flat. A quarter of a million dollars worth of business tossed right out of the window of all the brainless, bungling, stupid, alibying souls so I've ever known in my life you're in. Well, I can still spoil your evening. Look over there. What's the Ford you're doing with that old faker? Probably trying to save this job. He works for you, you know. What? Yeah. Any of your stupid harangue. I ever employ you in my business. I I Get the senses knocked out of him, I think, so. No, Pedro. I think he's got some sense knocked into him. I think so. <laughs> Come on. Hello, National Airlines. I want to see you on the midnight plane from Mexico City. Bolger is the name. I'll pick up my ticket in a half an hour. Thanks. Oh, uh... Hello. I was, uh, just going over to see you. Since when have I lived in Mexico City? You quizzling you. Now, well, now, well, let's be calm. I'm sure there's a way out. You'd better start walking toward it. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> I'm glad we still have our sense of humor. <laughs> I've just got an idea that'll snag you both. It's sensational. This had better be good. It had better be better than that. Oh, wait till you hear this. All of a sudden, he pulls by the right like this. I close my eyes. When I open, there was Jimmy on the floor. And he don't get up neither. I don't stand very good what's the matter. I can't figure out. Hello, Jimmy. What's a great fight. Didn't look so good from where I was. Oh, don't worry, Jimmy. I fixed you some nice enchiladas con queso. Maria, you fix the enchiladas. Si, Papa. And I got some nice fresh tortillas and chili and beans and everything. That sounds good to me, Pedro. Listen, you sit right down over there. I know. I saw the whole thing. You uh, don't object being seen with the next prize fighter, do you? Oh? 
Not as long as he hasn't any cauliflower ears. Sit down. Why, it's terrific, it's gigantic, it's colossal. You owe it all to that marvel of mentality, that paragon of publicity, Albert Xavier Bolger. We do owe him something at that, Horace. Right you are, Glorietta, my dear. That calls for a drink, my dove. That's the best offer I've had today, Ducky. <laughs> No, Jimmy, that's not where the tent houses go. That's where the pond is, remember? Oh, yeah. Uh -huh. See, the houses go right over there under the trees. That's right. Right there. You was too big for Chiquita's baby anyway, Jimmy. 